feeling rather than putting up uh, the ball just uh, because of the uh, you know, all quite good but uh, not the place again it's probably where they could run more down quite a bit earlier so I just uh, made some changes today on this one. Um, I've quickly flashed up over here a, um, a second audio frequency amplifier. It's based on the old LM380N, so just taken straight off the spec sheet essentially. Um, got a little 10k pot here which we'll use the volume control, which means the Teensy has uh, got a set output volume uh, feeding into this. Um, very simple um, circuit, like I say, straight off the... Uh, <coughs> Uh, straight off the uh, the spec sheet for that particular device, so you can see there, it uh, provides heats again there. And what I've also done is uh, incorporated um, some bandwidth control. So if I just sort of zoom up on on that, okay, and the uh, refresh rate. So what I've done here, um, <clears throat> I've just rearranged the screen a little bit just to do some um, some test. Uh, I guess um, indications down here is uh, the band so 80, 40, uh, 20 I've also got the, uh, the modulation type changing automatically with, with the band of course by selecting the right hand switch you can then cycle through to modulation and then you can um, select whatever you want there as well uh, the right hand switch is the mode switch so just outside of the view of the picture here and that just cycles through between frequency so now the rotary encoder is changing the frequency and you push it again, cycles to bandwidth, and if you look at that little line underneath the uh, the spectrum, as well as that number there, you will see it increase and decrease. So that's now sitting on a bandwidth of of uh, 600, 700, and no, I start at 200, and basically all the way through to um, just under six. So uh, that seems to be working well, and uh, I'll just run through the code in a sec, so you can sort of see the effect of that quite clearly. So you can see most of the uh, the energy sitting here. So the the uh, it's sitting uh, above the filter. This is not a brick wall filter, so there is a um, there is some skirts on that one, and you can sort of see evidence of that now as you sort of come through with the the bandwidth. So that's 2700, 2800. Works very well. Um, unfortunately, uh, my antenna here is an 80 meter antenna, so that's why most of my testing here is done on 80 meters. Uh, very good when there's um, CW. Um, if I you know, if, if I set this, the frequency up or the reception on a 700 hertz tone for my ear, then this works very effectively. So sort of, uh, sing that on say 900, and uh, yeah, it really knocks down all the higher frequency and just, uh, leaves the the A the, the, the CW tone coming through nice and clearly. But um, that was actually quite effective uh, and nice and easy to, to implement. And like I say, uh, I'll just jump through in a couple of seconds and we'll look at the uh, the code for doing that. Um, the beautiful thing is that the designer of this particular Teensy board and the audio the audio panel uh, has put together a very, very nice audio library which has built into it uh, notch filters and bandpass filters and uh, high and low pass and the like. So um, I've just implemented a, a quad, a bi-quad filter and uh, had uh, four stages so um, and so rotary, just by changing the, the rotary encoder here while it's on bandwidth mode it just changes the frequency just make the volume up but uh, yeah as you can see there it's quite effective Lightning crashes coming through here. Got, still got quite a bit of bad weather coming through New Zealand. Right, so um, let's just pause here. Um, we'll just pause and we will um, go and have a look at some of the code and uh, give you an example, an idea of uh, how easy it is to implement um, this in, in, in software. It's uh, with this particular library. It is quite quite easy indeed. So let's just pause there and uh, we're going to look at the code. Okay, so um, here we have the code that's sitting on the Teensy. 
Uh, again, just recapping, this is written inside the Arduino integrated development environment uh, using the um, audio library that was um, produced by Paul and, and the rest of the Teensy team. So what we have done here, if we just go through, um, we have a, a, a variable which here it is here, which is the, uh, the filter frequency. So the receiver is filled to bandwidth, uh, currently set for 2800 uh, hertz or 2.8 kilohertz. Uh, and what we do very simply is we declare it um, as a biquad. So audio uh, filter biquad. So this is the object. So we're um, substantiating it here and we're going to call it low pass filter. So from now on, in the main code, we will call it low pass filter dot whatever command we want to apply for it. So that's the way of, uh, of assigning that particular object. Um, and in terms of the audio assignments, we now have um, the first one, the audio input um, channel one is going to the low pass filter. That's one we defined up here. The output of that low pass filter is now going to the output. Um, that same input is also feeding the fast Fourier transform to produce that um, that plot on the on the screen. So this is subtly different what we had um, a couple of days ago, where we had the input going directly to the output. As you can see now, it's going input to low pass filter, out the low pass filter to the audio output. So that's um, how we sort of I guess uh, akin to wiring up um, the particular circuit. Anyway, so um, the setup hasn't changed apart from uh, when we first run through the setup, uh, we basically get those four stages of the bi-quad we talked about. So low pass filter, set low pass, stage zero, um, zero through three, in other words, four stages. And you'll see there, there goes that, um, that variable that we had set before at 2800. Um, and that's the Q. And the Q defaults to 0.707. Um, I've cranked up to one to sort of tighten up the uh, the skirts, and at this stage, it's 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 okay. I'm not hearing any evidence of ringing or any other kind of instabilities. So at this stage, I'm going to sort of stick with that. But in the but in, uh, moving on, if you know if there was to be any other problems, then I might back that back down again. But at the moment, I'm going to leave it where it is. Uh, in the main loop itself, um, no real changes uh, apart from adding in uh, that function switch. Um, and we'll, we'll see later on. It, it's a bit hard to go sort of go through line by line, but we have added in that function switch to change the various functions, and uh, as well as the uh, the band switch, which we saw on the left hand side. Um, no changes there, and then into the main uh, rotary encoder section, and what we do here, so on a clockwise movement. So if um, the function is on two, which is bandwidth mode, when you rotate the rotary encoder, it increments that filter frequency by 100 hertz. Um, if it tries to go above 6100, it then backs it back down to 6000. So that's the maximum frequency we have. And uh, similarly, when you're rotating it in the counterclockwise, it now decrements it by 100. And if it tries to get to below 100 hertz, it sets it to 200. So 200 is our, is our lower limit. And in both cases, once it's been set, it then calls straight away update receiver filter. So it's, it's calling a function to now update that particular filter. And that function looks like, here it is here. So there goes the, uh, the function update receiver filter. And as we saw up in the initial setup, turns off the interrupts and basically resets that particular filter's low pass frequency. So it goes first stage through the fourth stage and then re-enables the interrupts. And, that's, and that is essentially it in terms of the, uh, the digital signal processing um, on the fly changing the bandwidth, which is then affecting the output audio. So, um, you know, all of the heavy lifting has been done by Paul in the creation of that library, and it's just a matter of just assigning the right frequency. So, um, you yeah, know, very easy to use. And on the uh, the display itself, you'll recall we've got that line that comes up below the FFT plot. Um, 
So this is an area here. I have two lines, one one upon it, one. Uh, I draw one line and then one pixel below. I draw the same thing again, just to make the line appear a bit thicker. Um, there goes that same uh, filter frequency, and just divide it by a, a constant here to to scale it to the size of the screen. Uh, and that's essentially it. So as that changes, this line, this draw line command for the, uh, the display changes, and um, the, the the length of the line changes backwards and forwards. Uh, and that is essentially it. At the bottom of the screen, we have a, um, a series of little modes. So it just checks what band it is and displays 80, 40, 20. Um, we also have the mode, lower side band, upper side band, and CW. Uh, and then for that right hand switch, what's the current function um, that we've got selected? So it defaults to frequency. You push the button once, it then becomes bandwidth. Push it again, becomes modulation. And then when you push it again, it cycles back to frequency. Uh, and then as we saw on that um, little LCD screen at the very right hand side, we're actually printing out the, um, the current frequency for that particular filter. Um, and absolutely no change to uh, the function that updates the two parts of the SI5351. Um, so that's it. So uh, nothing overly difficult there. Um, more than happy to share this code. So just sing out and I'll work out a place to deposit it. Uh, but like I say, there it is there. That's, that's essentially it. And it's just a matter of uh, including some logic further up to adjust this variable here. And, um, and that's essentially it. Uh, I don't think there's anything else to point out at this stage. Um, I did have, I didn't show it in the video, um, out of the junk box a little uh, pre-selector filter, uh, which I decided to throw in. And uh, I'll look at, uh, in due course, uh, designing up using um, solid state design for the radio amateur, uh, some bandpass filters there using the, the annex at the back. I found that quite useful in the past. So what I think I might do next, um, I'm going to be away end of next week for um, a good week. So I'll try and do some more next week before going away. I think the plan now might be to to keep playing around with the software here and uh, look at doing some peak detection. So what I'll do with the, uh, where are we, back up here. Yeah, so these audio assignments, what I'm going to do around here somewhere I'm going to feed that input into uh, another part uh, to looking at the peak detection um, and try and work out what the average or the the, the, the peak audio or signal, I guess, is a function of the signal. And then I can look at outputting um, with the analog pins um, uh, some pulse width modulation. And then probably, I don't know, to see how that well that works, uh, being fed straight into that analog meter that I want to use as an S meter um, or I may have to do some filtering. Now there's absolutely nothing wrong or stopping me from or us from uh, when determining that peak signal actually printing it on the screen. There's nothing stopping us from printing it down here somewhere uh, but I just want to use that uh, that analog meter because uh, hey why not? Um, I like the idea of a, a dancing meter. So we could do it digitally down here and print it on the screen, but I'm going to play around with actually outputting a pulse width modulation on the analog pins and then either uh, feeding it straight into that meter, um, obviously dropping it down so I don't overdrive the meter, or maybe some kind of um, some filtering just to smooth it out a bit. So I think I might play around with that next. And, and then probably go back to the pre-selector filter and I think I mentioned in the comments I do need to go back and have a look at um, some of the impedance matching just to make sure I'm getting some maximum power transfer. So I might do the old resistor substitution there so uh, we'll do a video on that one where if I can't calculate the output impedance of a stage then I'll look at using the oscilloscope and first measuring the open circuit voltage and then drop a resistor across it measuring the, the voltage across that and varying the resistance until that previous reading is dropped by half uh, and then uh, that 
resistance should be equal to the internal resistance of the previous stage. So uh, I'll do that and then we may have to break out some uh, little toroids and, and wind some impedance matching transformers. But uh, that is uh, another plan. Anyway, I'll leave it there. It's already gone on to 10 minutes. So um, any comments, please sing out. Otherwise, uh, we shall keep playing. We'll see you soon.